Hey there YouTube, today I'm just going to be doing a little, uh, or tonight rather, I'm going to be doing a little review, uh, not a review, but an explanation of a power inverter. Uh, this is just a 1500 watt power inverter I got from Harbor Freight, just a little cheap one, 100 bucks. Uh, it's a square wave power inverter. Um, it, it does alright, and it really does live up to its standards of 1500 watts. It, I've done some brutal testing on it, and it works pretty good. And just give you a quick... Uh, here I got the cover already taken off because it had those Japanese screws and I had to go through a process to get those off anyway. It just looks like that. It's made by a brand called uh, Chicago Electric. Anyways, um, by the way this is going to be, it might go into two parts because I'm filming this with my iPhone. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my camera is currently not working for reasons I'm not going to explain right now but anyway and um, my laptop uh, is at Geek Squad right now Oop. it's at Geek Squad right now because uh, not because I couldn't fix it but because um, it's having hard drive issues and it's still under warranty and if I can get the hard drive replaced for free I will take it to Geek Squad and have them do it rather than me do it myself and pay God knows how much for a new hard drive so anyway got these little damn clip leads over here. I cannot edit this video right now with Windows Movie Maker or anything. I'm going to upload it straight from my servers cuz it cuz they upload YouTube videos good. They're pretty quick and whatnot. So, just letting you know it's probably going to be long and uh it's not going to be edited or anything. There might it's probably going to go into several parts. Anyways, with that all said, I'm going to go into explaining the inverter and how it works. Um so for those of you who don't know what what this basically does, I'm sure if you're watching this video, you know how a power inverter works. This is, by the way, the iPhone charger cord. Yeah, my battery's kind of a little low, so I figured I'd keep it plugged in. Anyways, the inverter uh, takes 12 volts DC in here, um, and it puts out 120 volts here for um, wall outlet, wall appliances that you normally plug into your wall. It's 60 hertz, uh, 120 volt AC. So to turn AC into DC, it's pretty simple. All you need is just little guys like these, these diodes, or a bridge rectifier. Uh, to turn DC into AC is quite a process, and that's what we're going to explain here. Now uh, that's what this is doing. So um, it's pretty, it's sort of simple, uh, yet it's it's a it's a process. Basically, what happens is you have your 12 volts coming in here. It's at massive amounts of amps. Uh, it says on the side here 125 amps. You can see they have a bunch of wires uh, put together. They kind of cheated it out so they wouldn't have to buy a big piece of wire or copper bus bar. They just used a bunch of individual wires, which I guess is fine, but it's kind of, it's all right, but it's just a cheap way of doing it anyway. Um, you know, what do you expect from a little hundred dollar Japanese inverter the the power comes in here at massive amount of amps um, like I said 125 amps and what it does is it goes into those guys back there those are gonna be your MOSFETs there those and under there are I don't know I forget the part numbers I had this whole thing taken apart one day um, anyways they're just they're high current MOSFETs I know they do like a hundred they're rated at a hundred amps a piece assuming you have proper cooling for them, which it doesn't look like those are properly cooled, but they're adequately cooled. I wouldn't say they are cooled enough to run at their peak rated current, but anyways, those guys back there are going to be all your high current switching uh, transistors. Those are MOSFETs, so what they do is your positive wires right here, as you can see, if we trace one of these back really closely, they run straight down into the PCB there and they're running into, let me see if I get the light uh, right there, the the high current wire there's a bunch of these as you can see they come in from the big post here and they run straight into the PCBs and they run into these little capacitors which probably, are, they're so small they probably don't even do a damn thing anyway it comes in here and it goes into the PCB and each one goes into a fuse a 40 amp fuse, they go into individual fuses because it's easier for them and cheaper for them to put a bunch of small fuses rather than a big fuse and that goes through the 40 amp fuse and straight into this transformer there's a transformer for each one each transformer is weighed at 250 watts so this is 750 watts here and this side is 750 watts together it's 1500 watts 
Um, so the positive line goes straight into the fuse and into the transformer's primary. Um, these are the high high frequency switching transformers, which go from 12 volts to 100 and about 120 volts. Anyway, what happens is the negative lines, those go into the um, you would see you have gate collector uh, and emitter. Those go into the no BCE gate drain and source. <laughs> it's been a, as you can tell, it's been too far. It's been a while since I've done this stuff. A couple, quite a few months since I've done it. But these are MOSFETs, so they're they're gate uh, gate drain. No, gate drain and source. Yes, gate. So the gate is driven by a little IC. The IC is going to be. There's a microcontroller over here, of course. You know, they, they scratch off the end of it. So they, they scuff it up so that you can't tell the part number on there. There it goes. And then they have this little, over here, this TL494C. Um, so this is what's going to control everything right here. This is going to be your microcontroller. You see you have a 4 megahertz crystal oscillator. And this controls uh, your your output frequency for the 60 hertz and I would imagine the actually the TL494 is, is a uh, gonna be your controller for the input that's actually a, a, a pulse width modulator controller and that is gonna control the the input frequency not the frequency but the pulse width modulation uh, we're not gonna get into all that right now that's way off topic but Basically what happens is it drives the gate of these transistors. There's actually little pre-transistors over here. These drive the gate of these MOSFETs. And these MOSFETs are hooked. The, um, the, the source uh, power is hooked directly up to the negative line. So these, this big negative lug here runs into these transistors here. The source leg of the transistors. These are all the end channel MOSFETs and these are switching at about I don't know between 20 and 40,000 Hertz. We'll, we'll hook that up to the oscilloscope in a minute and take a look at that. So what you have is you have you know high frequency 12 volt power at about you know like I said between 20 and 40,000 Hertz is usually what these run at and that's going from uh, these FETs into these transformers and these are switching at very high amounts of current like I said, you're going to be switching 12 volts. You can be switching up to 125 amps combined with everything combined in here. All these FETs are working together in parallel to accomplish the same goal. They're all driven at the same time. And what they're doing is, like I said, they're taking the 12 volts and they're, they're running it at 20 to 40,000 hertz into these transformers. So you have the 12 volt uh, positive line going into one side of the transformer, and on the other side of the of the primary core is the outputs of these transistors at about f let's just say 40,000 hertz for now. So now you have these switch mode transformers, and that's how these inverters can be so light is because these are actual these are ferrite core transformers, and you can have a transformer you know very very light and small like this running at 40,000 hertz. And it, it's they're very efficient, and they they're very light compared to a normal transformer. If you had an iron core transformer running at 60 hertz, it would be massive for 1500 watts. These are 250 watt transformers each, and if you had one of these that was an iron core running at 60 hertz, it would be massive. So they have these little transformers running at 40,000 hertz, and they run a lot more efficiently. So anyways, um, on the output of the transformer, it's going to be 40,000 hertz at about 120 volts AC. So you have your 120 volts now. So you're going from 12 volts, you're uh, switching it at 40,000 hertz, going into the transformer, and now you have 120 volts at about 40,000 hertz. Well, that's just as useless as you started out with because you can't use 120 volt 40,000 hertz. So what you do then is you take that and you rectify it again. So now what what's going on is you have the AC output of these switch mode transformers going into these diodes here. And that's outputting a DC voltage. So you're going to have about 120 volts DC now. So you've gone from 12 volts 
to 12 volt high frequency to 120 volts high frequency and now it's 120 volts DC so now you have 120 volts DC and then what you do then is that goes all these transformers this is all doing the same thing here this whole let me focus it there it is these are all doing the same thing six times each transformer it has a set of diodes in, in, a, in a bridge configuration and then you have these little filter caps here which like I said these probably don't do anything either they're so small they're undersized and and they are 200 volt capacitors so you have a you have about a 120 volt rail here on DC then you have these big massive transistors back here that are covered with this little silicon rubber coating and you have some over here and these are taking your 120 volts DC and switching it at 60 volt or 60 hertz AC so they're taking the 120 volt rails going into these transistors these are a lot lower current because they're running at high, higher voltages they're running at uh, 120 volts DC but they're running at you know just a few amps so you have a few here and you have a few here and these are uh, bigger transistors they're a good size transistor under there and that's driven by the microcontroller and the microcontroller drives the 60 hertz frequency to drive the gates of these FETs under here and that drives the square wave 60 hertz output to drive your appliance on this end so what happens again is you have your 12 volts in high frequency 12 volt um, high, high voltage high frequency high voltage DC and then you go here and you have high voltage AC, 120 volts AC. And that is your output. Um, I know I keep explaining that, but I just want to show you guys generally how it works. Oh, by the way, this little uh, bodge job over here is all me. I, I put all that in, so if you guys are about to comment and say, wow, that came with your inverter like that. No, it didn't. I bodged this whole thing up. This is a little board I built. You got a little potentiometer down there. Um, uh, there it is. Bingo. Um, and then a little thermistor with a little uh, silicon paste and everything, uh, thermal paste, to measure the temperature of the transformers, and that controls the speed the speed of the fans. Right now, I have it turned off, or I have it turned all the way on, so the fans just automatically turned on. Um, but anyways, that's just a little thing I made to keep the fans from running all the time. So I'm gonna actually turn it on and hook it up to the oscilloscope here. One second. I'm going to run it off just a little switch mode power supply back here from a computer. Um, and we'll... Ah, damn it, I keep doing that. Let me... Sorry about that. Let me see here. This is really annoying, holding the camera and... You can't... I, I know, I'm sorry, I can't edit any of this because I don't have my computer right now and I just, I'm just going to upload it from my server. Anyway, here we go. Uh, I'll unhook the charger from my iPhone. We have the oscilloscope here waiting for it to warm up and any second now there she goes let me turn off the flash on this by now I'm gonna turn the flash off there we go so anyway we're gonna turn it on there it goes and there goes the inverter and I'm gonna turn that actually I'll turn the light back on so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure the low voltage high frequency so the output of these FETs over here I just, I'm going to try and be careful because there is high voltage in here and uh, this stuff does not feel good if you get shocked by it I have gotten shocked by this several times working with it let me look for a place to put this okay so anyways this is the input to one of these transformers I have the ground leg is going to the positive side and the uh, lead is going to the switched negative side from the FET so this is the output of the FETs and this is what it looks like so it's very 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 high frequency you can see our time is uh, 20 microseconds so it's that's a very high frequency I can punch it in on the uh, let me go ahead and save this here I'll put it in the uh, storage mode and we'll go ahead and say let me see here oh 
Sorry about this, guys. Normally, I would edit this out, but um, I don't have my laptop now. Let me see. There we go. Okay. So, I'm basically just going to go ahead and um, see what the frequency is. So, I'm going to go from... Let me focus this a little bit. Sorry about the focusing. I'll focus it in when I get it dialed in here. So, from here... Let me save this. From here... To... Here... And there we are. And I'll turn up the brightness. Let's see if that helps. And there we go. So it says 27.17 kilohertz, and that's just, I dialed that in a couple seconds. Let me see if I can get a little bit better here. Let me go like that. And we will try that. Well. Okay, and it, it comes out to 27.47 kilohertz. So like I said, anywhere from 20 to 40 kilohertz, it comes in here at 27.47. That's not exact, but that's what it comes out to be. But you get the point. It's, it's uh, going at a very, very high frequency, and we have it at 5 volts per division. Let me see if, how it's grounded right now. It's pretty centered. And as you can see, at 5 volts per division, let me go ahead and make it 2 volts per division. Um, I don't know why it's so damn low. It shouldn't be. Is this... Oh, I know why. It's in 10 times 10 probe. There we go. So, 5 volts per division. There we go. That's 5 volts per division. And it goes past the second division right in at 12 volts. So this is 12 volts, 5 volts per division down there. And this is your 12 volt frequency and it's going at 27, about 27 kilohertz. We'll just call it 30 kilohertz for now. And it's going 20 kilohertz cycles just like that at 12 volts. That's what it looks like. So that's the primary of the high voltage transformers inside there. So that's what's going onto the input of these transformers. And then on the output, let me see if we can hopefully safely do this somehow. Anyway, it's going to be ridiculously high. Um, so here you go. This is it. It's times 10 right now. I have the probe in times 10, and it's going. Uh, one, two, three, almost three divisions, about a hundred and you know, 170 volts, just like AC should be the peak of AC power, and it goes up. Um, it goes up, like I said, about a little bit past the third, uh, the second division. So actually, that's not 170. That's about 130-ish volts. I I was looking at that wrong. So this is. 50, 100, about 130 volts. Um, and this is one s side of the diode, so that's why it doesn't go completely uh, all the way down. So this is the positive bias of the diode. And that's the output of the transformer. So this is times 10 and about 130 volts DC output. It's pulse DC. And that's the output of the SMTP transformer, the switch mode power supply transformer. And that's what it looks like. And then, so that comes out of the transformer at very, very high voltage, AC. And it's turned into DC. I could measure DC, but you guys all know what DC looks like on an oscilloscope. It's just going to be a straight line. And I don't like probing this with a camera in my hand because I have to be very careful. And I don't, this isn't an isolated power supply. And this uh, isn't isolated, so... I have to really pay attention to what I'm doing when I'm doing that because I could shock myself. And these these inverters will not uh, give you any mercy. They're just as bad as a wall socket. So they'll shock you pretty good. 
but yeah, anyways, that's pretty much it. That's how the thing works. Uh, 12 volts in. Uh, I'm not going to explain it all again. You guys all know, but... And the reason the 12 volts in is so many amps is if you guys know Ohm's Law. Anyways, you have a... Let's just say you have 100 amps coming in at 12 volts. You do 100 times 12, and that's 1,200 watts. So you have 1,200 watts going in. If you're pulling 10 amps on the output, that's 12 times 120 volts. That's 1,200 watts out. So if you're pulling 10 amps on the output, you're going to have 100 amps, 12 volts going in. Now it's going to be a little bit more than that because you got to take into account the inefficiencies of the inverter. But leaving out the inefficiencies, you can see it's going to be a, a massive amount of amps here, 100 amps here, just to get 10 amps on the outside. Um, and even because it's DC, it's constantly going, it's constant current. These wires will get pretty hot and you're pushing a lot of amps versus AC, you know you always have that zero period so your wires don't get as hot. And that's pretty much it, but um, let me just give you a quick peek again. Let me give you the flash. And that's it. Really nothing too much. Like I said, I'm more the, I discussed the power electronic side of it, all the switching and how all that works and I show it to you. Um, I'm not going to show you guys the output because you guys know what it, what the output looks like. It's just just like a wall outlet, except it's a square wave instead of a sine wave. Um, so it's 60 hertz square wave. You guys all know what that looks like. Um, and it's just too hard to probe because there's nowhere to probe easily on here right now. Um, but yeah, and all this stuff, it's just you got a microcontroller there. Uh, they got it all scratched off, and a little pulse width modulator here, pulse width modulator controller, and just a bunch of little circuitry to uh, filter uh, some of the frequencies, probably um, dry. You know, you got little uh, resistors to set values for this. Now, there are actually 1% resistors, so you know, you just it's sort of like an art. This is basically like an Arduino. Sort of like an, how an Arduino works, like an App Mega controller, except it's not an App Mega or anything like that. It's not a um, Atmel chip or anything like that. It's some brand I've never even heard of. Um, you can I'll give you a close look at it. Uh, there it is. It's really scratched up. You can't tell what it is. Uh, they they intended for you not to be able to tell what it is. Uh, it's not, it can't zoom that well, but anyway. TL494, everybody knows what that is. It's a legend. That thing's been around forever. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions or comments about how this works or want to know any more details, I can definitely uh, sh uh, shoot you a little bit more details into something. That's pretty much it. I'm surprised we made it all in one video. Um... Yeah, that's about it. Uh, if you guys like again, if you have questions, comments, whatever, or if you enjoyed the video, uh, so no, don't so, subscribe again. If you want to subscribe to me, that's great. Uh, like the video, put comments, whatever you want. Uh, give it a thumbs up, whatever. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, have a good one.